You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. Welcome back to another episode of Sexy Marriage Radio, where, just so you know, Pam, mm-hmm. the Sexy Marriage Radio getaway is next week. I know. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> it's, just wanted to make sure you were prepared. Yeah. As yeah. If, that one I'm, I'm keen to. As if all the stuff around the house is just piling up and up and up with all the stuff that we've got. Getting right. All the stuff Everything to together for what's going to unfold. Um, but it's going to be a fabulous four days. Mm-hmm. To those of you in the nation that are heading here to the DFW area, we can't wait to see you. Look forward to it. Hang out. We start Thursday night on the 17th. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic time. If you missed it, we'll do something again next year, mm-hmm. but it's going to be a little different. More details will be coming out later. We're excited to share all of that. But this is Sexy Marriage Radio. Yes. Where each and every week we spend some time going where the nation wants to go and the way we know where we're heading is they let us know. And you can do that at 214-702-9565 or feedback at sexymarriageradio.com or you can jump on my.smrnation.com which is a free platform and then there's deeper levels with the academy and groups and and some chats that are happening there. But there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There is. Summertime's the time you're supposed to be relaxing. Not yet. But (laughs) it's going to happen. But I hope it does for people out in the nation, too. I I hope hope that there's a chance that they get to get away with their spouse, get away with the family, breathe a little bit, sit by a pool. Um, If the rain would ever stop here in Texas, maybe we could actually use our our backyard a little more. One of these days. (laughs) And then we'll be saying, where's the rain? So I want to do a little bit of an extended intro today Mm -hmm. uh, before we jump into the show. Okay. Um, Because one of the things that seems to jump out with, with, there's a theme with some of the different emails that keep coming to my, uh, I mean, to either in my.smrnation.com or feedback at sexymergeradio.com that it, it's all surrounding this idea of initiation and instigation of sexual connection or contact, Mm -hmm. right? Which is, which that's where we, that's where we reside Mm -hmm. with the show is a lot of time we spend trying to help frame conversations, trying to help steer uh, better connections during your sexual encounters in marriage. And we've said in the past, sex in marriage doesn't happen by accident. No. You You know, it has to be instigated and initiated by somebody. Typically that's the higher desire. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the framework we've got. So if you're new to the show, this is kind of give you a little recap of, of where we stand on a lot of things. Cause there's a higher desire and a lower desire on everything. Mm -hmm. Higher desire carries most of the weight to making whatever the topic is, happen Mm -hmm. or come to fruition or the structure of it. And when it comes to sex, that's just true. Mm -hmm. The lower desire could be interested Mm -hmm. because maybe they're more responsive, which is actually maybe a better way to think of lower desires. Mm -hmm. But what do you do with the fact that as a marriage evolves, so does the initiation patterns, so does the instigation happen because we change as people. Sure we do. And so the ways that you used to maybe bring it up early on would have been probably in the realm of a question. Hey, you want to? You interested in some sex tonight? Mm -hmm. You know, where it's just kind of a fairly blatant, Mm -hmm. but also ripe with all kinds of pitfalls. Because anytime you ask a lower desire are they interested in something? In that moment, they probably aren't, so it's likely going to be a no if it's framed as a yes or no question. Right, right. right. <laughs> then, yeah, that's a good point. It's how, how do you go about approaching things? So I just want to have a conversation just real quick with us about how that's evolved, and, and we've kind of seen that through our life mm-hmm. somewhat, but also through just the interactions we've had with people in the nation Mm -hmm. about how you can capture, you know, because the way I instigate or initiate sex as the higher desire spouse in our marriage is different than the way you would show interest. Well, sure. Right. And so I can often fall into, well, 
I look for you to instigate it in the manner in which I would. Which isn't going to happen. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. This this is that net analogy I would use of it's kind of like there's a horse-drawn carriage that we're both on, and I've got the reins, and I'm leading the horse wherever we're heading. And every so often you would reach over, grab the reins, and give them a good slap to kind of get the thing rolling, and then hand the reins right back. Yeah. And that would be almost the way you would roll. Right, right. Well, and and by, you know, the the example earlier, you would expect me to initiate the exact same ways you initiate. Mm -hmm. Right. And as a lower desire, no, it's more, if I'm going to initiate, it's going to be so much more subtle. And there's things that I think I've done and I think, oh, he's going to give me credit for initiating. And you didn't even notice that I did it. Right. Right. And wow. And and then it's a hit when you're like, well, I, I really wish you'd initiate more. What? Well, I did this and I did that right. and I did this. And you're like, what? Really? <laughs> You did that? Oh. That's you, not that's not initiating. Right. You think that's not initiating. And right. I'm like, yeah, it, I, it is. is. Give me credit right here. And if you put as an undercurrent of all of this, every single one of us as humans has this fear of, I just don't want to be rejected. Yeah. And so that's part of the reasons why it's sometimes more struggle to be bold or upfront or get back on the horse. And try again if you have been rejected a bunch or if it took a lot to actually initiate because it's not in the realm you play very often. Right. So you're saying it, neither the higher desire nor the low desire wants to be exactly in whatever it is. Right. Because I've actually had people through the course of my career that I've worked with that the higher desires, frankly, just said, I'm done. Unless I can have 100% assurances and no more rejections, I am not initiating anymore. Right? Uh -huh. Because they're just tired of, I, I've just, it's, the scale has been tipped so far to an extreme in their mind that I'm just, I can't, I don't want to handle the hurt, hurt anymore, the disappointment anymore. Then it just takes some work to help unpack and reframe to realize, wait, not initiating something you want is still in a state of rejection. Yeah, you're just assuming rejection for the rest of your marriage. And oftentimes you can then get into the, the nuance of seeing that the other spouse has the same fears, mm -hmm. wants the same assurances, <laughs> wants, you know, so it's, there's a lot of similarities in us. We just don't see it that way mm -hmm. because we fail to recognize sometimes that marriage is a great mirror, challenging and exposing things in ourselves, but we can easily blame our partner for that, not me. Yeah. Rather than, no, 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 I help co-create it. So I guess the whole thing to me is, how do we help people recognize, and hopefully this conversation at least frames a little bit of it, that seasons evolve and shift and change, and how are we better students of ourself and our spouse when it comes to this aspect of our marriage to start to see, wait, can we talk a little more freely about it? If I, say, if I bring up the subject, does it get a smirk from you? That's a win. That's a success. Mm -hmm. Does it create a banter? If you bring it up more freely, that's a win. Right. Right. Because it's, it's keeping it as part of the undercurrent. And maybe it doesn't make clothes actually start coming off right then and there, but it does later. It, it just seems to open up to in, more intimacy, right? If I can be able to understand in our scenario, if you can understand Oh, that really was Pam initiating. That right. wasn't that was an effort. Right. And okay, it might be really hard for me to see this subtle nuance, but that was an initiation. Right. And thank goodness you appreciated whatever it was even though it wasn't the way you would do it. Right. right. And and that's just trying to see the idea that all of this is a language, everything we do communicates. So how do we just get better at seeing the playing field, mm -hmm. seeing the territory in which we reside, be a better participant in my role, and then lead it where I'm hoping it'll go, but also realize this is a long game, mm -hmm. right? It's not just an event. Right. It's, a, it's an unfolding of things. So how are we both better doing that? Right.
Well, coming up on today's regular free version of Sexy Marriage Radio is a conversation I get to have with Dennis Merkus, the creator of Melt, the couple's massage courses, yeah. our yeah. friend from Australia. Love me some Dennis. Where we, in a way, kind of continue the conversation we just had in the open on the importance of staying connected, the importance of touch, and how it can be multifaceted on some of it can be entry into something sexual. Some of it can just be at the end and of itself. Mm-hmm. That connecting and touch is an incredibly important aspect of our life and our relationships. And he's over the course of his year, uh, years doing Melt, um, we talk about how the importance of it, what he's learned, where it's going. Um, and also right now it's in the midst of the first sale he's had in, in two years. Mm. Of So it's a great Father's Day special. Mm-hmm. It's going on up, up until Father's Day, which is okay. um, June 20th. So if you want to take advantage of that as part of our audience, you want to go to smrnation.com forward slash melt, M-E-L-T. That'll take you straight to it. And then coming up on today's extended version of Sexy Marriage Radio, which is deeper, longer, and there's no ads except for the one you just heard in the open for (laughs) Melt. (laughs) You can subscribe at smrnation.com forward slash smracademy. Dennis and I continue the conversation, although this time it gets personal, where He's had quite a, bo- a lot happen in his life over the last decade, decade and a half, yeah. um, and how Melt has evolved, but how he has evolved and what he's learned from it. And then at the end of our conversation, the sneaky little mate that I have down there turned it on me and, and started getting personal with me on, right. on things. So I was like, well, okay, well, let's go there. I, I, I asked you questions to get you there, so now I'll, I'll return in kind. So. There you go. All that's coming up on today's show. So with Father's Day right around the corner, our sponsor today, Song Finch, Mm -hmm. can actually be a great gift that makes Father's Day so much easier or any other kind of event that you want to honor and celebrate. Yeah. Because what Song Finch does is they work with over 500 music professionals that range from all kinds of genres, Mm -hmm. and you give them any kind of specific information about your spouse or whoever the gift receiver is. Mm -hmm. They take that and turn it into a radio quality song with whatever they may love best. Mm-hmm. I actually got to do this for you, you since did. we had just celebrated our 28th anniversary. You did. I loved it. Month long cross country trips, Glacier Park taking dips. Long as I'm on your hip, I know I'll be fine. You make me better. I wanna keep on getting better. Like sunny weather. Just wanna go somewhere together. I loved, I mean, it was all these references and it just warmed my heart knowing, oh, you told him about that. Oh, you told him about that. You know, that was, it was just really special to sit in here. Yeah. Um, and just something I'll, you know, And it was also, have. also so much fun to create because it may sound overwhelming to create a song, but with over 2,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot, it's a gift that your spouse is going to surely love forever. So songs are normally $249, but for this week only, they are taking $50 off, bringing it to $199. But if you use the code SMR, the listeners in the nation actually can save another $20. So that's a total of $70 off for the perfect Father's Day gift or whatever occasion you're trying to honor. So for only $179, it's a gift that they'll treasure forever. So visit Songfinch. Dot com. That's S-O-N-G-F-I-N-C-H dot com and use the code SMR for a total of $70 off for the perfect gift this week only. Thanks to Thrive Cosmetics for sponsoring us today. I've been using this clean skin loving products and love them. If I'm not wearing any other makeup, I don't go out without mascara and I just love their liquid lash mascara. It goes on to give long lashes and is smudge free and clump free. And the Brilliant Eye Brightener does just that, brightens and opens the eyes. 
It's a highlighter stick and it's easy to apply and blend and it's perfect on the go. And their amazing products are clean with no parabens and sulfates and they never test anything on animals. Thrive Cosmetics has a bigger than beauty mission that this is what I love so much. Uh, For every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help women thrive. They support nonprofit partners with donations of funds and products to organizations that help women emerging from homelessness, surviving domestic abuse, fighting cancer, and more. It's a beauty brand that goes beyond being skin deep. I love everything about Thrive Cosmetics. Their products are great and their bigger than beauty mission is truly inspiring. You're going to love them as much as I do. Visit thrivecosmetics.com slash SMR for 15% off your first order. This is an exclusive offer you can only get here. That's thrivecausemedics.com slash SMR for 15% off your first order. thrivecosmetics.com slash SMR. Well, it is always a privilege and an honor to welcome my friend, Dennis Merkis, back to the air, airways with me at Sexy Marriage Radio. And if you've been around SMR for a while in a part of the nation, you've heard us mention Melt, which is couples massage courses from the comfort of your own home or phone or <laughs> pad, iPad, whatever it is that you want to do. But Dennis, uh, from all the way across the world, it is fantastic to see you face to face again. G'day, mate. I love chatting to you. It's been such a long time. You know, last time we were talking, uh, we were actually supposed to be face to face doing a, a, a what were we supposed to, we were supposed to be actually doing live workshops with your audience. Right. We were going to do that as part of the getaway. I was having you come in, uh, and then COVID mm. hit, and everything Jesus. changed for the world. Uh, but mm. but it's so great to connect with you again, man. And mm. uh, what's going on with uh, just what you do? Um, I, th- it's just massaging. It's just helping people connect and teaching couples how to massage. Yeah. And I, I'm curious because you've been doing this a long time and we've known each other for quite a while, <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I'm curious, what are your, what are you seeing as far as, as the trend has gone on with this of, yeah, you know, what, what's the benefit of why would a couple see the the yeah. the importance of massage and and connecting and, each other yeah what what are you seeing it's really interesting it's really interesting so the overarching thing is that people are doing it to i mean they all start off because it's sexual right it's get your hands on each other and it turns into a whole bunch of fun which is i mean as you know i don't teach the sexual side of things i i stick to the massage side of things right but in the beginning it's always, well, it's not always, but it's often turning into a little bit of cheeky play and a little bit of something, something, which is fun and it's great. Right. That's but it's the- interesting now that we've been, it's interesting now that it's evolving uh, and so many couples have come on board, and especially in the last, since COVID's hit, it's been a massive trend up of a lot of people coming on board and, and learning how to massage each other. Right. And um. People are doing it more for connection. And I'm getting emails coming back that people are massaging their children, not doing it with the romantic component, obviously. Sure. sure. But uh, yeah, it's just it, and a really interesting feedback. Like I was reading one email from a lady last year where she's telling me her child is actually mentioning, Mum, you apply sun cream differently now. Okay. You know? This is, a, this is a kid, a seven-year-old kid that's actually telling mom that he feels through her hands that she's more gentle uh, and she's doing it with intent, which is a big difference. It, this really gets me going. It really yeah. excites me because that kid holds that memory of, oh, you know, like touch is important to them. Yep. And it's also something that that child will end up taking on through their relationship with their children as well. I mean, we all do this, right? Absolutely. And and I think this is because this is the thing that's the power to melt for me is it's a like you're talking about it. The hook initially can be, well, this is a good four way Fourier into something else. Sure. Right. Yeah. But. But it's also its own thing that's deeply profound, deeply meaningful, deeply impactful 
for a relationship, yeah. for an individual. I mean, because well, people love- go and pay for this too, right? I mean, we'll go, we'll oh. go. Pam buys a package a couple times a year with her masseuse just because mm-hmm. busy season's going to be one of those things. And, and I'll get a call. I'm about to head 90 minutes, you know, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. it'll be, it'll be heaven for her. Cause she's like, <laughs> it's going to work out everything. I'm like, that's great. Yeah. I, but there, but there's a power to it when there's a relational component too. That you, that's, well, we all have meaning, right? We yep. all search for meaning in our relationships. And this is what I'm learning is like, I have a little focus group of about a thousand people on Facebook where we all talk about melt and we talk about the future of melt and what we can do to you know grow and and learn from it. And I was talking to that group and letting them know that it no longer feels like melt is just me. Like yeah, people get to own their own experiences. They can use touch, physical touch, sexual touch, massage however they want for whatever meaning it is in their relationship, you know, whether it is, I want to connect or whether it is, I want to say sorry, or just show you that I love you or I care about you. Or, I haven't seen you for a while. I right. want to get my hands. On. Right. No. And, and I love that because I think you're talking about any kind of touch we have, it, it gets interpreted either from the sender or the receiver. Cause we all have enough map and meaning associated with it that it's like oh i know what this touch is i know what the i know what this means right because that's that's the typical interaction that takes place as far as the language as it unfolds in a marriage that i'm oh now he's a whole lot more handsy so i know what he's interested or she's a whole lot more Uh, snuggly so i know what she's interested in whether it's sex or not we still know there's a meaning attached to it and the beauty and the power of melt is it gives you a different on-ramp or off-ramp to a lot of other ways to have, have meaning sure, yeah. and connection too, because there's techniques involved in what you're teaching. That's just beneficial on connecting on all kinds of levels, whether there's an attachment towards where it's leading in possible sex or whether it's just an attachment towards a moment together. Or, or even like, communication there's something that you said last time we caught up that has stuck with me and i think about this a lot and you said in a segment that we did on melt everything that we do and don't do is communication right like i you i think about this often whether it's with friends or with talking with my parents you know uh and and interacting and massage is the same sort of thing like there's communication in that touch in the way we actually you know, blend with our partner when we're massaging them you know yeah and so There's body language in it There's no I, I i agree and and this is one of those things that i i want to give a little bit of a insight into a history lesson if you will of of, of how did melt get started you know can you oh. kind of tease that out a little bit because this is a this is a great story of of just how it's evolved for you and then where i want to go with the extended content a little bit later dennis is just what what's behind the scenes on on how it's evolved too so but how did how what's the story of belt well i mean it's interesting because it's the it's, i'm almost 20 years in like <laughs> it's been going on for a long time right so in the beginning, there's all different stages depending on which decade of life I was at. So in the beginning, it was completely selfish, me trying to get down a girl's pants. Uh, how do I separate myself from the rest of the boys? Uh, you know, <laughs> give me a moment. Cause I'm, to, <laughs> I'm like, how deep do I want to go in? So this is a girl that I really like. And we're flirting a lot, but no matter what, um, no matter what my advances were, she just was not coming upstairs. So I kind of like just said, look, I've written this massage course for couples, totally untrue. Would you like a massage? And I, I literally sat down. I'm like, how do I separate myself from all the other boys out there? I know I'm really good at massage because that was my job. Right. I was a professional practitioner. And I just gave her this massage that was on the fly. I did put a little bit of thought in there. I'm like, how do I massage this person that's completely different to any other massage she's ever had before? And 
I did watch the movie Ghost. Yep. Right. It wasn't long before, and and that's where it all clicked. I'm like, I'm gonna that pottery scene. Yep. In Ghost. Yep. I'm gonna use that, but I'm gonna massage her at the same time, and that's how I'm gonna win her over. Yeah. And we we started dating that night. So, <laughs> I mean. It, so, it sounds silly and it was silly, but it was silly, awesome, and we had a great time. Yeah. And we sat with it for like two years. Like two years. We kept it for ourselves before we started thinking, hey, what if we showed other people how to do it? Yeah. And that's that's where um, I think it shifted in a lot of ways in the sense that you move it from this is a specialty thing to where mm-hmm. now it's this collaborative, wait, other people can do this. You can make it your own. You can apply some of the foundational oh. principles yeah. because I, I know the times over the years with Pam, um, sometimes massage can be, um, it's one of those things because my energy level is there. It's I can go for a while. I, it's not a big deal, but some of it, it's like, uh, no, and, and I, but it's really coming down to, cause I'm doing it wrong <laughs> right? well, in a lot of ways. That's- Totally right. Yeah, yeah. So you could be either doing it wrong, but sometimes you just don't want to massage your partner. I've had that before. Sure. You know, uh, and it, there is also a part of the language that, you know, there's a bit of foreplay to the massage before the massage as well. You know, it's not like there are times where I would massage Emma and, the, you know, we'd leave the lighting on and there'd be washing in the corner and yeah. you know, the, the house would be a mess. Like, this isn't attractive. This right. isn't fun. You know, we're just going through the motions. Right. But um, going back to like how Melt started, the evolution of Melt. So once we started teaching Melt, it took, we spent eight years in live workshops and it wasn't like I got it right. You know, like right. it was a bumpy road right. of getting it wrong. Right. Yeah. And this is what I love the most. It's like you know, the first workshop that we did, two couples showed up. That's it. I had to ring up friends and I'm like, can you guys like, come along right. to this workshop and pat it out so it looks like we're busier than what we really are? Yep. And that happened a few times, you know. And when I say a few times, a lot. That <laughs> happened a lot <laughs> in the beginning. But after a couple of years, you know, it started to fill out and there was 10 couples showing up. By the by, by the fifth year, we were selling out. Yeah. And uh, I think the time... There was one day where I taught 150 people in one day, and that's where I said to Emma, I, I can't, I cannot keep working like this. We need to get it online and we need to create videos. And so I think we it was another three years of you know um, sold out workshops, just getting it right. You yep. know, I wanted to make sure that it was perfected. I yep. wanted to make sure that how I taught it was the easiest way that couples could comprehend yep. and learn at home. And I got to test, like the live workshops after eight years, I got to see face to face what people are doing with my techniques, mm-hmm. uh, where they're going wrong. Am I saying the wrong things, you know? And so, yeah, when we rolled it out onto video, that was like, I mean, you know, there's moments, there's moments in your life where you're like, I've got this, like, I've got this, you know? And we were filming Melt. Melt was shot uh, at night. We started at 5 p.m. and we finished at eight uh, at 5 a.m. The whole thing was done in one night, just the massage techniques uh, for a 12 hour period. We're having a break, it would have been at like 2 a.m. And I go to Emma, we've got something. I feel it, mm-hmm. we've got something and we've got it right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you, abs- you, you absolutely do, man, because mm, uh, I I cannot endorse this enough for mm. the ability and the impact of, of what it does for people that are willing to dedicate the time. Because obviously, you know, Pam and I have been falling victim of this where you we inter- we inter- connected a long time ago, yeah. e- even before Sexy Marriage Radio. You know, I was just blogging mm. at the time largely. And, um, you know, you were gracious enough to give me access. I got in there, was reading it all, watching it all, trying to learn what I could, but then I stopped, right? It's like, Oh, I picked up a couple of things and then, and then it's just kind of, so it's just, this is one of those things that it's all there for everybody. And, 
and that's the benefit is you can keep coming back to it. There's benefit to it. You can learn enough and then you can just keep mm-hmm. going because you've gone even further than just the basic massage. There's, there's feet, there's hands, there's head, there's a lot yeah, of other there's components. there's advanced techniques. Yep. And this is what I love. It's like you pick and choose what you want and what you need for that massage tonight. Yes. And if in whatever you love, just keep doing the same stuff. Eventually, over time, you'll let it go. A year later, you'll come back and say, let's try this new massage. There's always more techniques there to pick up on. Yeah. No, and, and that's what... Great. And and that's what so right now as we're as we're recording this you know this is a big push going uh, as a big sale you got going for Father's Day and I'm, ha- I'm not happy, just a big sale happy to partner with you. Think only sale I've done in two years. Okay. So and Perfect. I got a feeling that we won't be doing a sale for a very long time either. I just. Yeah, I'm not a fan of doing sales, and I thought I don't know why. I'm like, this is gotcha. probably the only sale I'm doing this year. I got gotcha. you. I got you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, as, as, as I can't wait to have more interactions with you, man. And and I want to pivot here in just a second as we move to the extended content of um, a little more behind the scenes. If that worked for you, dude? Sure. Yeah, of course. Well, I still remember the very first time uh, Dennis reached out when I was blogging at Simple Marriage. Yeah, yeah. And that was building... And I just get this email from a guy that says, hey, I think he probably even said mate then too. Probably. But um, I got to tell you about what we're doing. Here, and, you know, here's some information. Go check it out. And I was immediate, clicked on that link, saw his site, watched one of the videos, totally hooked. Yeah, you can't help but love it. Because it's such a great just process that he takes people through to truly be helpful and connect and get so much more out of what can be because there's just techniques we can learn yeah in everything and yeah. massage is definitely one of them because most of us aren't masseuses right like, right but uh, i love what he's doing and can't wait to see where it goes next yeah me too well this has been sexy marriage radio uh if you missed or want to hear anything else from us let us know 214-702-9565 or feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. So whatever you have been doing, hopefully this leads to getting your hands on your spouse in a really good way. We'll see you next time.